Hey guys, welcome to Madison Bell. Today we're going to be talking about treats. This is an important topic for a lot of people who are training their dog or their dog trainers and they're getting hit and miss with the treats. And today we're going to talk about a couple things. We're going to talk about treat selection, treat value and healthiness, treat preparation, treat storage, overfeeding treats, training times, dinner times, and balancing treats with meals. And that's a lot of topics, but we're going to get through it pretty quickly, and and I need you to stay tuned to find out more about how we're going to discuss treat value. All right, guys, so now let's talk about these treats. A lot of people, when they start training with their dogs, they buy a lot of, i um, going to say, not so... Uh, healthy or tasty treats from the store. The dry cookies, their little uh, bacon things that are um, come together. These things have been processed, mass production. There's no effort put into these treats. And the dogs sometimes will eat them. If you have a dog with a high food drive, they're going to crush these treats. They're going to really eat these treats, right? So if you have a dog that doesn't have a high food drive, you're going to have some issues. So as we move forward, let's talk about the treat selection you probably could make for yourself within 15 minutes at your house and have access to your dog as far as their attention span and training. And also, they're going to be healthy for your dogs. So let's start with treat selection. When you are at the store, one of the treats that we often use are uh, turkey bacon. We always use turkey in all our meats. We use turkey bacon. We line them up. And we slice it down the middle and we make little squares out of them. And we put them on the pan we bake them for about five minutes. They're kind of crispy and we put them in a big Tupperware. So this is a good value treat because one, the dogs love this treat. The second thing is they don't fill the dog up to where when you feed them their dinner time, they won't eat because they've been eating you know, heavy meat all day. So this treat comes into play. We love it that it's turkey. It's not really expensive. It's really to make, and you can have hundreds of these, all right? I got the idea from a client when I told her about the turkey hot dogs, and she uh, used the turkey bacon, and we used those treats for like an hour in training, and her dog wasn't full. So I started using them. Thank you, Claudia, for that. And they're amazing treats to use for your dogs, okay? Treat value and healthiness. You got to give your dog something healthy. That's important. The value of the treat, treats to dog is like money. So if you're giving your dogs, uh, just say, you know, a carrot, that's like 50 cents to a dog. They may eat it, but they're really not going to be attentive to it. Where if you had a piece of steak, that may be like $100 for your dog. So they're going to be really focused on you. So we really need to pay attention to what we're giving our dogs. This is kind of the reason why you can't get your dog to do something and a dog trainer pulls out a bag of little pieces of steak bits and then the dog is all focused on them. You could have had the same type of, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why um, dog trainers are using these special treats. You're using something off-brand and it looks like you're not putting no effort into the training for your dog so they're not really paying attention they're not really focusing on you because you have a low value treat now also too we want to make sure the treat is healthy we just don't want to give them anything we want to give them something that's not going to mess up their stomach uh something that's not going to fill them up for dinner but something that you can keep giving them all day long and the dog is going to keep watching you okay treat preparation you have to put a little effort into the treats we want to run into the store, grab a bag of uh, a box that says doggy treats on there, and then we're good. And then our dog really doesn't like it, or they listen sometimes, and they listen. That's not going to help us in dog training, okay? We need a dog focused on us every time we step into the arena to train. We don't need them sometimes liking it and sometimes not. We need them absolutely focused on us every single time. Every second counts. Every minute counts. Every time you go out there, if they start doing a movement wrong and you allow it to get by, they're going to keep doing that. So we need to have really prep. We need to prepare these treats. And if it's going to take five, ten minutes out of your day to do it, then you got to do it. You just cannot um, throw anything in there and hope for the best. You got to really prepare. So 
treat value, treat preparation, spending a little money in to getting the treats, I mean, five, ten, twenty dollars. I normally spend on three dogs for treats for about a week. I will spend about sixty dollars because I get all the meat, I prepare it, I store it, and then I get it ready. Okay, so this is extremely important storage. You need to have a place in your refrigerator to store this stuff. You should have it in a, a plastic container or Tupperware. You should already prepared it. And the treat is probably going to be good for maybe at max four days. So you're going to have to use the stuff. You cannot have it in your refrigerator for two weeks and giving it to the dog. They're going to get sick. So you need to prepare it as you would yourself. You wouldn't eat leftovers five days old. So you need to knock these treats out. Now, treat value and selection. I don't just use one brand like turkey burgers or turkey um, hot dogs or turkey um, bacon. I use a variety. So I use all of the above. One day we may use turkey burgers. One day we may use turkey bacon. Next day we may use turkey dogs. So the dog is, always has a different selection. Okay, this is extremely important. Eating the same treat over and over again is going to get old. So let's uh, spread that out. Let's get a different uh, variety selection for the dogs so that they have something exciting. So every day they don't know what they're going to get. This is extremely important. We need to, and I'm not going to say weigh the treats, but we need to keep an eye on them. If you have a scale to weigh them, that's great. Because if you're giving your dog a pound of meat every time you do a session, by the time you feed them dinner, they're not going to eat. So we want to make sure that we're not overfeeding the dogs when we're doing the training so that they have room for dinner when it's time to eat. Because if they're not, this is going to affect their weight. This is going to affect a lot of other things. So we want to make sure we still have them on a regular feeding cycle with their dog food. We're just not going to feed them breakfast. That brings me to my next point. A lot of people feed their dogs breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then they try to squeeze treats in between there. And then they try to get their dog focused. When dogs are training... They're not going to get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They're only going to get dinner because you're giving them treats throughout the, the day, throughout the training cycle. It makes sense. If they're already eating all day and eating treats all day, then why are you giving them extra food? If a dog has a full belly, they're not going to perform. They're not going to want to listen to you. They're not going to want the treat, and they're just going to be um, you know, standoffish. So you want to make sure the dog is on an empty belly whenever you're training with them. This is extremely important. Empty belly. When you know you're done training with the dog for the day, then you feed them dinner. Okay? When you know for sure there's going to be no more training going on, go ahead and give them the regular size dinner. Right? So we're not overfeeding them with treats so they won't eat dinner. This is how we balance. So make sure we're not giving them too much food. Because if, if we get them on this cycle and then all they eat is treats and now it's time for them to go home from trainers or, you're, you know, your dog is not going to want to eat the dog food. They're just going to want the meaty treats. So make sure we're balancing that. That was training times and dinner times. Balancing treats and meals is extremely important. A lot of trainers will get dogs hooked on these treats they, and the dogs won't eat their dinner. And then dogs start to drop weight because you're not getting a sufficient amount of protein from their dog food and from the treats. So balancing this is extremely important. Maybe the first two days you may have a little issue with the dog wanting their dog food. But once you get them on a the cycle, they will expect to get treats and eat dinner. So it's extremely important. If I have a dog that starts to get hooked on treats and will not go back and eat their food, I will cut them off the treats. I completely cut them off the trees and we'll use their kibble until we can get a balance in there. I don't want them to stop eating their dog food so they can drop weight, okay? I don't want them going back home and not wanting to eat their dog food. So we want to make sure that they're eating both, that they're getting their dinner and they're getting treats. We generally would do three to four training sessions a day. And if I know it's going to be a heavy day, then the treats are going to be light. We're not going to overfeed them, right? If it's going to be a light day and they're going to do two sessions that day, then we can give them a, a, a more amount of treats. But we do not want to overfeed them. Treats are extremely important to dog training. This is where a lot of people fail. They just grab random treats that don't the dog doesn't like, and they and then they're kind of like, oh, the dog doesn't want to listen to me. It dog just doesn't. It's not the dog doesn't want to listen to you. It's just whatever you're presenting, they don't want it. So then they're not listening to you. All right, change the value of the treat 
and put a little preparation into the treat, store the treat properly, and then disseminate the treat throughout the training session in a, a nice format, whatever format that works for you, and you're going to see a change in dog training. This is where we start. We start with the treats, and if the treats are, are prepared properly and stored properly and given to the dog in a good manner, you're going to see a whole lot in dog training. So if you're preparing dogs and you're training dogs or you're trying to train your own dogs, reevaluate what treat you're giving your dog, right? I think it's better if you prepare your own treats for your dog versus buying already store made. I've seen a difference in the store made product and I've seen a difference in when treats are prepared for the dogs. I know it because I've done it hundreds of times. I've seen dogs start healing in two days versus eating a non-value treat and healing in two weeks. So change the value of the treat, prepare it properly, and you're going to see a big difference in dog training. I'm Madison Bell. You guys have a good one, and I hope this helps you out when you start working with your dog or working with a client's dog.